China has blocked the proposal to designate Sajid Mir, a member of Lashkar e Taiba, as a global terrorist for his involvement in the 2611 Mumbai terror attack. India has criticized China's action to block the proposal, which was co sponsored by India and the US, calling it as driven by petty geopolitical interests and questioned the global counter terrorism architecture. China's blocking of the proposal prevented Mir from being subjected to measures such as asset freeze, travel ban, and arms embargo. Mir is considered one of India's most wanted terrorists, and the US has a $5 million bounty on his head. Despite Pakistan claiming in the past that Mir had died, Western countries remained skeptical and demanded evidence. You are well aware that India has faced the brunt of terrorism largely flowing from across our borders for well over three decades. Whether it is the Mumbai terror attacks of 2008, the 2016 Pathan Court air base attack, or the 2019 Pulwama terror attacks, we have lost several thousands of innocent civilians, as well as the bravest of our armed forces in this battle against terrorism. So when we talk about plugging loopholes, capacity building, and meeting the resilience gaps, India's perspectives are coming from hard core experiences from the front lines of innumerable battles we have fought against terrorists in practically real time on a daily basis. While the 9-11 terror bombings in this iconic city of New York had changed the landscape of the global counter-terror architecture, the 26-11 Mumbai terror attacks shook the collective conscience of the world's largest democracy. Ten fully armed assailants from across the borders, well trained in conducting urban warfare, descended on the shores of Mumbai and wreaked havoc over three days. It resulted in 166 innocents being killed and it included 26 foreign nationalities. During our chairship of the Security Council Counter Terror Committee till last year, the entire UN Security Council visited Mumbai and paid collective homage at the site of the attacks in October 2022. We thank all member states present today for their solidarity in standing by the victims and in honoring their memories. We also commend the UN Office for Counter Terrorism, who in a special gesture dedicated a tree at the Northeast Lawns to memory of all victims of terrorism and also invited a victim of the Mumbai terror attacks to share his story yesterday. But regretfully, justice still continues to elude the victims of the Mumbai terror attacks. I'd like you all to listen to this particular sound file in the presentation, even as the terror attacks were unfolding. जो जहाँ पे आपको मूवमेंट नजर आते हैं बंदा के छत पे चल रहा है कोई आ रहा है जा रहा है उसको फाइट होको उसे नहीं पता यहाँ पे क्या हो रहा है इंशाल्लाह इंशाल्लाह दिस वो साजिद मीर अ वेरी ड्रेडेड टेररिस्ट हु डायरेक्टेड द टेररिस्ट फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द बॉर्डर इन रियल टाइम टू हंट डाउन फॉरेनर्स इन द � he was proscribed under the laws of the United States, this host country, and of several other countries globally, many of whose nationals lost their lives. But when the proposal for listing him did not go through the Security Council sanctions regime, we had strong reasons to believe that something was genuinely wrong in the global sanctions regime, as manifested in the Security Council. If we cannot get established terrorists who have been proscribed across global landscapes listed under the Security Council architecture for pure geopolitical interests, then we really do not have the genuine political will needed to sincerely fight this challenge.